Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for January 25th, 2020. A Disney cast member may have saved the life of a woman suffering from domestic violence earlier this month. The woman called to purchase Walt Disney World Park tickets on January 9th when the cast member heard the woman saying, get off me and get away from me to someone who was with her while she was on the phone. Sensing trouble, the Disney employee asked yes or no questions to the woman, such as if she was actually needing to purchase park tickets. The woman responded no. The cast member then asked if she needed law enforcement assistance, and when the woman responded yes, the cast member contacted Northern York County Regional Police in Dover, Pennsylvania, where the woman was. Quote, when officers arrived at the home, they found that the woman and her 38-year-old boyfriend had been arguing, according to the report. The woman told police that he choked her three times and slapped her. The boyfriend was arrested and faces both misdemeanor and felony charges. His preliminary hearing is scheduled for February 1st. Good, good job by the cast member. The Disney Skyliner is the newest transportation option to travel around Walt Disney World Resort, but it does need maintenance much like anything else. You may want to know that in the next week, uh, there will be some interruptions to the service. Of course, on Sunday, the Skyliner line to and from Pop Century and Art of Animation was closed. Uh, but this week, uh, Hollywood Studios and Epcot lines will be closed. On Tuesday, January 26th, that Hollywood Studios line is closed. And on Thursday, January 28th, the line to Epcot and International Gateway uh, will be closed as well. So keep that in mind. Paint crews are quickly working to give the Osceola Parkway entrance sign its 50th anniversary makeover. After the removal of the Cinderella Castle and flag decorative elements, painting continues. The Osceola Parkway entrance sign features an arch connected to Mickey and Minnie signs. A standalone Goofy sign is also part of the entrance uh, area. No additional primer has been applied since our last visit. Paint crews are working from right to left, as you can see. The Welcome to Walt Disney World Resort sign was the first element to be painted. The background by Minnie Mouse is now complete as well. No traces of the original purple remain. The columns are also complete with shades of gray replacing the brick red. Furbishman has not yet started on the Mickey and Goofy signs, and all Walt Disney World Resort entrance signs are going to be refurbished. Of course, uh, some are done and some still remain to be done. Wishables collectors will like these new keychains now available at Walt Disney World. Each keychain resembles a different Disney Parks wishable character from the past. We found them at the Magic Kingdom. We found Anna, Elsa, and Olaf from the Frozen Ever After collection, a Dole Whip from the food, co food collection or snack collection, whatever it was, uh, Phineas the Hitchhiking Ghost, and the Pirates of the Caribbean Parrot. This is Peg Lake Pete, which used to exist at the Walt Disney World version exclusively, all in Wishables keychain form. Get them for $9.99 each, the price of an actual Wishable. Found them all at the Emporium. Our favorite purple dragon figment is appearing on yet another piece of merchandise for the taste of the Epcot International Festival of the Arts, a reusable cloth face mask. It's made of the same material as the Disney Park Spirit jerseys. This mask features a purple silhouette of figment with a paintbrush and a bucket on the left side. The Orange Festival logo provides the perfect orange overlay on the purple figment. The purple and orange uh, tie-dye hues match the Figment Loves Pigment Spirit jersey that was released as well. You can get this face mask, face mask for $12.99 at World Show Place. In a series of tweets, legendary actor Eric Idle revealed that he's never visited Journey into Imagination with Figment at Epcot, in which he stars as Dr. Nigel Channing, and seems to have forgotten much of his experience working on the attraction. It started when a Twitter user sent Idol a picture of Figment and asked if there were any more plans to work with him. Idol responded that he loved working with Don Rickles, which sparked some confusion. Idol cleared up his mistake and said he forgot Figment and confused him for uh, Devin and Cornwall, the two-headed dragon he and Rickles portrayed in Warner Brothers' Quest for Camelot. Another Twitter user said that if even Idol can't remember the attraction, Disney should put it out, its, out of its misery. Idol defended for uh, forgetting the attraction by saying, to be fair, I never saw the finished thing. I just recorded voices in L.A. When Idol was reminded that he didn't just record voices, that he's actually on film in the ride, he said, okay, thanks. <laughs> This is my favorite thing that's ever happened. It's unclear if I don't remember his filming uh, the short-lived journey into your imagination either, uh, but he has in the past brought up his experience on Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Uh, that being said, not that many months ago, he also brought up that he remembered being filmed as the moon face, but I don't think he knows it was in this ride. I don't know. It's pretty great. Uh, finally, No Context E.T. edited Idol's moon face uh, with the famous moment from E.T. in front of it. And Idol responded, this I did do. Uh, this, is, this is my favorite thing that's happened this week. I love it. 
Star Wars Rise of the Resistance's boarding groups have been consistently filling up within minutes at opening of Hollywood Studios. Uh, but in the past few days, the 1 p.m. boarding group has remained open for up to hours. On Wednesday, January 20th, boarding groups remained available for two hours, closing at 3 p.m. Thursday, they were gone at 2.46 p.m., and Friday, they lasted until 1.55. That being said, over the weekend, they were gone almost instantaneously again. And that 7 a.m. group is still filling quickly. Um, yeah, I tell you, we went tonight. Uh, we didn't use our boarding group until like uh, 30 minutes until park close, and we were just about the only people in the building. So I don't know what's going on, but um, even though they're running out fast, a lot of people are getting done with this park real early and, and skipping town. Hollywood Scoops is offering more than just ice cream, at least throughout this weekend. The Disney's Hollywood Studios quick service location is testing breakfast items. The limited menu features mimosas, Bloody Marys, and cinnamon rolls. Breakfast menu is available until 11 a.m. It's not sure uh, when, uh, if it will stay, if it's going to be extended beyond January 24th. We don't know yet, but nonetheless, we tried both drinks and the cinnamon roll, and you can head on over to our website to read all about it. Disney often uses vinyl barriers to discourage guests from ducking under ropes, or actually just so they can see that the rope is there. What at first glance looks like the classic Chinese theater artwork we've seen all around the park is not entirely as it seems over at Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. The Chinese theater is at center as always, but what around it has been altered. A careful examination reveals artwork representing the park's new lands. At left, the spires and buildings from Batu in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge frame the theater. The park's main entrance is still depicted on the right, but above, Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story Land soars in the sky. Prior versions of the artwork featured the Earthful Tower, which was later removed, and the soundstage, which is currently on the trash can version of the art, and also the version of the art that's up on top of uh, Taylor to the Stars on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, you know, that's uh, the soundstage is not in this new version either. Uh, the rope flags at Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway are the first appearance of the new art, but it's unclear if it will appear in other places. I will tell you, I don't want it on Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard because it wouldn't work in 1930s Hollywood. I uh, don't really, wouldn't really understand a Star Wars land and Buzz Lightyear, but um, nonetheless, this looks good if you want to use it in other places. I have no problem with that. Mini ear headbands are a must have for any Disney park goer. And a couple years back, you may remember, uh, one of the most famous was the donut mini ear headband. But it is back in a new form and ready to shine, literally. We found the updated donut mini ear headband at the dark room at Hollywood Studios. This new ear headband features pink, uh, pink sequin bow in the center with two very realistic looking donuts as the ears. The purple headband complements the multicolored sprinkles well. The white icing makes the rainbow beads pop. You can get them for $29.99. Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail at Animal Kingdom is now partially closed due to construction around some of the exhibits. While guests can still traverse the trail, some sections are unavailable and path directions have changed. Guests are now exiting through the trail's entrance and entering through the trail's exit. There are arrows on the ground uh, throughout the trail to direct guests in the correct uh, direction. This is for both the construction changes and social distancing. Arrows on signs point guests to the left to keep them to that side of the pathway. Guests can circle through the trail while remaining to the left. There are social distancing markers leading to a sometimes busy gorilla viewing area. It's only available now as you enter the trail. When leaving, guests must bypass it. The Meerkat viewing area is uh, as far as the trail goes currently. A new Dole Whip flavor is available for a limited time at Marketplace Snacks in Disney Springs. The watermelon Dole Whip is inspired by Minnie Mouse with her bow and ears sitting on the top. It's only available through January 31st in celebration of National Polka Dot Day. Make sure to ask a cast member at Marketplace Snacks if you want this special snack because it is a secret menu item. We've been keeping up with the Yacht Club Resort Lobby refurbishment, and we thought it was complete until this enormous rug made its grand entrance. The giant area rug is a copy of the smaller area rugs that are placed throughout the seating area. Uh, these similar rugs were added only a few days prior. The rug is a mixture of light and dark blues, with the lightest colors forming a large hidden Mickey. The rug is placed in the center area of the lobby, where the Christmas tree once stood. Uh, perhaps the tree kept the larger rug from being installed at the same time as all the other ones, but nonetheless, there it is now. New look for the Yacht Club Lobby. Warm up your winter with a little tropical fun. Check out Boutiki at Polynesian Village Resort to find the new light-up statue featuring the tiki god Maui and as well, the little orange bird. The statue may look familiar as there was a similar version available previously, but the new version has a different color scheme and an entirely new base with the orange bird. The statue sells for $55 and would provide the perfect ambience while you're sipping your tiki 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 rum at home because Trader Sam's is still closed. Makes me sad.
Sail on over to the recently refurbished Beach Club Marketplace for all new Beach Club Resort themed apparel. A new Beaches and Cream Soda Shop logo tee, a raglan, uh, features the iconic styling of the restaurant, uh, including those signature beach balls you'll find around the interior. There's also a baseball cap featuring the charming version of the original logo for the Beach Club Resort. The underneath of the brim features the trademark umbrellas from the resort's logos as well. The tee retails for $29.99, the cap for $27.99, and I bought them both. In the wake of canceling the annual passholder program, Ken Patrick, the president of Disneyland Resort, spoke to the Orange County Register about the resort's future membership options. Though he didn't offer specifics, Patrick said that the Disneyland Resort team will be using the time while Disneyland and California Venture are closed to develop new offerings and a new way to think about the business given the situation we find ourselves in. Patrick listed the following questions that are being considered in developing future membership options. Quote, what do people want in the new world? What do people want? Uh, when do people want to access our parks? How frequently do they want to access our parks? With what level of spontaneity? With what level of value? All those kinds of things and many more. While the new program will incorporate some of the elements of the old annual pass holder program, it will also include new features and experiences. Quote, this is not designed to limit choice and flexibility, Patrick explained. It's designed to enhance choice and flexibility. People may say, here's how I've always used it. People may say, here's what I bought, but I didn't quite use it and optimize it. People may say I have a different family structure or my financial situation is different. I would love to do it a little bit differently than I've done it in the past. What we're hoping to be able to provide is the choice and flexibility for all those different evolving states. There's nothing off the table as we begin to think about things that are important for people, Patrick went on, whether it's the number of times that they visit on a product offering, whether it's when, uh, it's a, is it a midweek or a weekend, is it morning or afternoon, is it day part oriented, it's all those kinds of things that we're incredibly curious to hear back from our guests about. Disneyland and California Venture have been closed since mid-March 2020, and it looks like they may reach a full year of closure. For now, Disneyland Resort fans can continue to visit the downtown Disney District and Buena Vista Street. According to a tweet from Imagination on Twitter, a Disney survey provides a glimpse into those possible upcoming membership annual pass options. With those passes now a thing of the past, Disney is considering these other options. The survey lists some possibilities. Uh, in this case, they listed three particular passports, all including discounts on merchandise and food. Some passports also include special event discounts and free or reduced parking. The survey also includes a three-day multi-visit ticket as well as a one, two, and three-day ticket. And while passport and ticket options may change, the survey provides a glimpse into Disney's current line of thought. And later on in that day, in fact, uh, Imagination shared even more uh, with more possible alternate versions with different kinds of blockout dates, features and discounts, uh, reservation structures, all kinds of things. Uh, this is a very, very long post, and I won't bore you if you're not interested with all the details, but I will tell you, if you go to www.wnt.com, we have a post that lists all these uh, possible versions of the membership and break down all of the, the uh, benefits and perks and things that would be a part of them. So if you really want to look in depth and see what Disney is up to, I would check it out on our website. Last year, Tokyo Disney Resort began its five-year effort to replace its Disney Resort line monorail fleet with a new Type C fleet. The first to enter service was the new monorail yellow back on July 3rd, now followed by monorail pink on January 23rd. On a drizzly Saturday, we even got to take a ride on the newly inaugurated train. The interior is, of course, the same as we saw in Monorail Yellow with a very Mickey-influenced design that includes chairs with his signature shorts pattern. Type-C trains are also, also feature larger windows and long bench seating along the walls, similar to a typical commuter train. A nice touch on the Type-C liner is that the Monorail travel animation changes color depending on which train you're aboard. You can check out a tour of these gorgeous new Monorails from July right here on our YouTube channel. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next magical trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. The Vacationeer, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you didn't pick up your WDWNT logo hat, they are in short supply. I think we got about 20 left, and we're running out of the largest size. I think we're down to two of those at this point. Pick up yours at CarouselProducts.com, your new era WDWNT fitted baseball cap. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow.
Looking for the latest in Disney news on the go? Then download WDWNT the app. From news to videos to park hours and more, WDWNT the app is your one-stop shop for the latest from the Disney world. Available on iPhone and Android, just search for WDWNT in your device's app store.